Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to look at the redesigned toolbar in Roll20. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So you may have noticed this pop-up in chat asking you to try the new toolbar. So what's that all about? Well, let's turn it on and take a look. And incidentally, this module that I've got loaded here is called the Unraveling, which is an absolutely fantastic Call of Cthulhu scenario. A real quick spoiler alert here. Essentially, your investigators go to an auction to purchase an ancient Egyptian jar and scroll. During the auction's proceedings, the scroll is exposed to magical energy and it opens a rip in reality and basically the hotel starts to break down around the players and they have to escape the hotel as it's basically dissolving all around them. It's this amazing chase sequence as they try to escape the building and the horrors that get released as a result of this tear in reality. It's a wonderful scenario. I'm going to put a link to it down in the video description. Okay, so the new toolbar is enabled, and actually the first thing I want to talk about is over here on the right-hand side of the screen. The zoom toolbar has been changed a little bit, and now when you click on the number here, you get this flyout menu where you can adjust the zoom level that you want to go to. So it's real easy now to zoom to fit, so you can see everything all at once. And I really like this, especially for this particular module and this particular page, where now the investigators can look at this cork board of all the clues that they've found throughout the course of the scenario. And then when we want to zoom back in, we can click on the plus sign just like before, or you can say zoom to a particular percentage. Let's zoom to 100%. Okay, great. Now, we also have the select button just like always, but the pan button now is also its own dedicated button. So that allows me to move around the screen just by clicking and dragging. So I'm going to click and drag now and I can see all of these business cards that are on the cork board. You can see that some of those are on the token layer and that means that my characters have met those NPCs and others are on the GM layer which means that my characters have not yet met those NPCs. So that brings me to the next thing that I want to talk about which are the dedicated layer buttons here. So previously, you may remember you had to click on a like a flyout in order to select which layer you were going to be on. And now we've got dedicated buttons for each layer and each layer button has a different highlight color. So now it's really easy at a glance to know which layer you're on. Blue is the GM layer. Green is the token layer. Yellow is light and pink is the map. So I can go to the GM layer quickly move this business card to the token layer and then jump back to the token layer and now there's no confusion no ambiguity about which particular layer that I'm on now let's switch over to one of the battle maps so that we can talk more about some of the other features here and incidentally I do need to mention I absolutely love the artwork that's in this module just look at the detail within this room I absolutely love this Okay, so if we continue down the toolbar, your drawing tools are just the same as they always were. You can freehand things, draw shapes, and then clear everything. Your text tool is pretty much the same as well, except now the drop down for fonts actually displays what the fonts look like. And that's really nice. Plus, you can bold and ital the fonts as well. Your special effects toolbar works the same as it always did. So if somebody's going to send out a beam of acid, you can do that. And then you've got dynamic lighting tools here if you have a pro account where you can place light sources, doors, and windows. If you're using Fog of War, this works exactly the same as it did as well. And you've got your measure tools, which allow you to measure the distance from one point to another. We've got a new icon for the turn order button, and it does everything the same as it always did, just it's a different glyph. And we've also got our dice roller here, which has a little bit of a facelift as well. So if you want to quickly roll 2d6, you can do that using the die roller. And then the advanced roller here keeps track of all of your last 10 rolls that were performed. This can be moved around or resized. And if, when you're done with it, just close it out and you're good to go. Now, the last button that we'll talk about is the one at the very top. This is the settings button, and this gives you access to a handful of settings, such as being able to preview the vision that a particular token has. In this example here, you can see that this token doesn't have vision on, so I can enable it. And then this is the world as Beryl Moses sees it down here. So there is enough light in this room for her to see everything. And when we're done with that, we can exit the preview 
and then we could preview a different character if we wanted to. And so this token doesn't have vision enabled either. We can turn that on. Okay, now he can see everything. We can exit the preview. Additionally, you can adjust the opacity of the GM layer. You can see I've got a monster down here on the GM layer. If I bring this down, it gets fainter or darker depending on my preferences. I can copy the game link to give to my players. I can toggle dark mode on and off. You can also send feedback to Roll20 about what you think of the new toolbar. And if you want to switch back to the original UI, select this option here and that'll put you back to the original toolbar. And you can also exit your game from here. Now, before I sign off, just a couple of other things I want to mention about this module in particular. For starters, all of the NPCs are incredibly well fleshed out. They all give the motivations that the character has, how they're going to interact with the players. And, you know, you've got your expected antiquities dealers, but then you have antiquarians and ethical art thieves. And my personal favorite, Trenholm Elliot, a cultist and medium, who is a total con man and charlatan and wants to be the center of attention and is just an absolute blast to role play. So you've got a wonderful cast of characters to work with here. All of the handouts that you can give to your players are really top notch. These are very well detailed. They look good. They handle well during gameplay. And you also get a set of pre-generated player characters. So you can literally just pick up this module and get your game up and running. So there you have it. A quick tour of the new Roll20 toolbar and a little bit about the Call of Cthulhu scenario, The Unraveling. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.